Hey guys, it's Amy at Zoe Beck and I'm going to do my October 2022 book haul. So part two. So I had one book haul uh, a week ago about um, all the books I got at the Multnomah County Library sale that I went to. Um, so <laughs> that was quite a few books, but I didn't pay a whole lot for that, That's which is great. I also have 29 other books that I brought into my house. Now, caveat, a lot of these I got uh, discounted or used. Um, not as many as normal or were full price. So that's good for me. So my actually my average cost per book is a lot lower than normal. Um, I have read six of these or five and a half, six of these books. So that's pretty good. <laughs> I still added all these books to my TBR. This is just the way it is. And I have to say, again, it's it's just the way I spend my money and um and enjoy it. So anyway, so we're gonna go through it. I'm gonna go through different um genres, kind of grouped them kind of in a different way. So um let's start out with the classics. I bought more classics this month than I have in a while because it was Victober. And every time I see people's Victober videos, there's always books that um <laughs> that pop up that I want to read. So um, the first one that um, I'm going to show you here is Late Victorian Gothic Tales, which has, um, I don't know, like, I don't know, it was like 12 stories, something like that. I don't remember how many there were. Um, but they were by many different authors like Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I think there's one by Oscar Wilde, uh, Vernon Lee, Henry James, uh, Rudyard Kipling, um, and then the other people, I don't know. I guess there's 10, 11 stories. Anyway, so I just picked this up. It was, uh, it dropped in price one day. Um, and I've been wanting to get some more Gothic tales. Like I have other ones to read too, and I'm not great on short stories, but I thought this might be one at some Victober I can read. I don't know. I also picked up, um, In a Glass Darkly by... Uh, Sheridan Lefanu. I really want to get more of his books. I really like Camilla many years ago when, or a couple years ago when I read it for Victober. Um, but this one has, I think this one's also, this was also a short story or shorter works. So, um, yeah, so Camilla is also in here, which I didn't know, but I have a separate copy of that. I just wanted a couple of other stories. I do still want to get like Uncle Silas and I think that's the other one I want to read. That's a novel. But anyway, I, I picked this up again. That's kind of probably at the same time. And I also got um, Charlotte Bronte's Selected Letters. So I saw a lot of people reading this the last couple years. And now that I have finally finished all of my um, Bronte novels, I can read this. I didn't, I didn't want to read um, anything nonfiction on them until I'd finished it. I didn't want to be spoiled for any of the books. So now that I finally finished all the Bronte, Emily, uh, and, and, uh, Charlotte's books, I can now, um, read these. So I, I'm again, next year, maybe, I don't know, but I heard a lot of people really enjoyed those. I did pick up a used copy of the Cranford Chronicles by Elizabeth Gaskell. It's not the greatest copy, but I didn't pay that much for it. But, uh, this one has Cranford in it, but also has Mr. Harrison's Confessions and late, My Lady Ludlow. Right, so I've only read Cranford. I either read it last year or the year before. I can't remember now. Um, and really enjoyed it. But I wanted to read the Mr. Harrison's Confessions, which I think comes before that. And then uh, Lady Ludlow, My Lady Ludlow, which comes afterwards. So now I can read the other ones. I might reread Cranford when I get to this. But I wanted to have all those. And I wanted a physical copy of that. Um, I also picked up another Elizabeth Gaskell the Moreland Cottage. I could have got just read it online, but I wanted a physical. It is kind of tiny print and the formatting isn't great, but this is again, one of her uh, short stories or novellas that I wanted to read. I don't know anything about it, but again, I need to read more of hers. I also got The Necromancer by George W.W. W. Reynolds. So I believe he's the one that I read is it Wagner the werewolf? I don't know. So I bought this because I, I totally off of Jennifer Brooks, um, her talking about it. And I thought, well, I would like to try another Penny Dreadful. And I got this copy, but it's so teeny. I'm going to have to get a magnifying glass to read this. Um, 
it is just super teeny and it's double it's just horrible looking i'm sure that's what it looked like when you read it but my eyes are just not as good as they used to be so i'm gonna have to get a magnifying glass for this one luckily i did not pay a whole lot for that i bought that used online and then the last one i got was castle epstein by alexander dumas so this i didn't know anything about this book until i saw it on um Janelle at Too Fonda Books. She uh, had it and I was like, oh, I want to read that. This was translated by Norma uh, Lore Goodrich. And that was, looks like that translation was done in 1989. So again, Alexander Dumas is uh, writing at the same time as the Victorians, but it, he's French. So it doesn't really, so it's not, it's kind of the only one that doesn't <laughs> go into the, the Victorian ones of these, but I still want to read all his stuff. I am behind on my reading of the Three Musketeers or the D'Artagnan romances. I still need to get through those. Um, but I have a couple now of his other novels that are other ones in this one. I don't know anything about this one. Um, I can't remember. It's a prophecy of Merlin foretold that um, the Countess would die Christmas Eve. I don't know. Anyway, I, have to, I haven't even seen if Janelle got to this or not. I was going to see how she went, but I bought it right after I heard from it. So that was, again, I bought that used clearly because it's an ex library copy, but really a nice copy actually for what I paid. So I'm pretty good about that. Um, my only nonfiction. Um, or not our book that I got was a tomb with a view, the stories and glories of graveyards by Peter Ross. I forgot I bought this until it showed up. I was like, Oh, I bought that. Um, so this, um, is again, a nonfiction on, on graveyards and things. And I think it, it talks about several different places and, um, different things on the gravestones and in the I don't know, something like that. It looked interesting, so I bought it <laughs> so at some point. I don't think I'm going to read that for nonfiction or whatever, but you never know. Um, then I have, let's go, uh, let's go this way, two kind of mystery books. <laughs> Both are books by Wendy Webb. So again, I have read a couple of her books this year and really enjoy them. I want to read more. I now have like four or five of her books to read. Uh, so the first one is The Fate of Mercy Albin. And the second one is the tale of Halsum Crane. I don't know how you say that. I don't remember. I think this is the older one. And then this one came next. Um, but they're both like mysteries. Like this one is a letter pops up. Um, and it's some, like her mother, she was told her mother, I think that she thought her mother had died or been told that. And it turns out that she hadn't, she'd been living somewhere else. And then there's some mystery letter. I don't know. And then this one is, um, this one has been avoiding her childhood home because she's haunted by stuff that's going buried, long buried secrets. So I don't know what's going on with that one. But again, her stuff usually has a mystery is the main core of it, but there's always kind of like this supernatural or spiritual kind of twist to it. And so they're not, I mean, again, they're not realistic in any way. They take place almost all of them around like superior either on the Minnesota or the Wisconsin side kind of thing. Um, it's around there somewhere, but it's around Lake Superior. So Lake Superior usually is a big character in a lot of her books. I don't know about these ones, but I just meant um, this one talked about Lake Superior. So I don't know. But again, I love her books. They're just, they're just fun. Like it's not like they're the best thing ever, but they're fun mysteries to, or, you know, with a little supernatural and a little romance. Like it has kind of, it's kind of a good mixture, I guess. Um, I do have three, um, historical fictions. One of them I picked up was the Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels by India Holton. So this is the first book. Oh, is it, is it the Wisteria Club? Is that what it, the series is named? I don't remember. Um, it doesn't say on here. Um, but I know there's a, at least a second book out and it's about some women, um, who they're like, well, at least one of them is a thief. And then I think she uh, is dealing with an, a male who is an assassin, <laughs> but is smitten with her. I don't know. It just sounds, somebody said it was really cute. I don't know why it was a while ago. And I've been, it's been on my list to get. And uh, it, I got it. I think I had a, it was on sale or something. I got it for that. Um, I picked up The Last Bookshop uh, in London uh, by Madeline Martin. So this is um, on World War II. 
uh and it's talking about london and again it's another bookshop one i have like i don't know like three or four books that has to do with bookshops in london during <laughs> during the war during world war ii so i need to like make like do a video or or write read a couple of them i don't know if i can read that many in a row though i'm really bad about that stuff but this is another one i don't know enough about what this one's going on but um this is I, it might even i'm not sure if this one has a dual timeline or not this might just be i don't know um i can't tell right off if it's a dual timeline it, it just talks about the woman who's in the bookshop anyway but i'd like to read that and then i picked up um mistletoe christmas an anthology by eloza james christy cadwell jenna mcgregor and erica Rid ridley anyway i saw this last year and it's been on my wish list all year and uh to it has to do with it's like one of those anthologies where they're all at the same part like i think i think it's a house party they're having a a, a you know a, a party and uh then all these they're all you know all all the stories are somehow connected with this location and this christmas party and the shenanigans that happen like uh somebody um uh sir so someone's like too busy that doesn't want to get married but clearly that's gonna change uh someone's directing um i guess a play of cinderella but has no interest in marriage and then another one is is unhappily married um but she's trying to i think deal with her husband trying to figure out what to do and then another one um I think takes a chance because before she becomes an old maid <laughs> so anyway i don't know i as i said i think i saw some people talk about this last year i'm not sure if that was like sarah at the bookish knitter or not but anyway i've been again it's been on my wish list for a really long time so i thought i would uh read that and then i have a couple just kind of random books that i got i got a couple when i went to barnes and noble at one point was the dark king by gina l maxwell so this is I think a, a fairy contemporary romance books. I don't know. It sounds fun. This woman, I think she um, goes on this trip to Vegas, like, <laughs> and she wakes up. I don't know if she's wakes. Up, yeah, she wakes up married to a guy <laughs> who's a, who's like a fae uh, ruler of some sort. I'm not. I'm not. I don't know. But it just sounds ridiculous. But it. I don't know. It sounded good. <laughs> um, I also picked up reluctant. Um, Immortals by Gwendolyn Keast. Keast. I think that's how you said it. I'm not sure. Um, but this is Dylan has um, a character from Jack Dracula, a couple characters from Dracula, a couple characters from um, Weathering Heights. No, not Weathering Heights. Uh, Jane Eyre. Um, and it's talking about two of the women who are seen as victims in those books. And they are vampires. <laughs> living in 1967 LA. So I just, <laughs> it sounds really, really cool. I did uh, try it out and I did uh, like the writing. So we will, um, I just think it sounds cool. So I think they're still dealing with Dracula and Rochester. Anyway, <laughs> it sounds good. Anyway, I'm excited for that one to get to that. Um, I also got The Vanished Birds by Simon Jimenez. I think that's how I said that. Um, this I think is kind of, I'm not sure exactly, <laughs> kind of bought this on a whim. Um, it talks about people, it, I don't know, I think it's like a space kind of thing. I'm not sure. Connections with space and time. I don't know, mute child, burden with um, imaginal powers, a solitary ship captain unfettered from time. A millennium's old woman haunted by a lifetime of mistakes. I have no idea. <laughs> Look good though. <laughs> I admit it. And I bought, I got that on sale or used. I don't know. Yeah. And then I also got The Obsidian Tower by Melissa Crusoe. This is the first book in the Rooks and Ruin series. I, um, I don't know. It's just a fantasy, which I probably shouldn't have bought since I'm not reading a lot of fantasy right now. But, um, one of my uh, friends, uh, Andrea Stewart, was a writer. She was raving about this on Twitter or and Instagram at some point. So I, the series. So I thought I'd pick up the first book to try it out. So I, I don't know anything about this. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's just that. And then I have a couple of books from Katie Robert. 
Um, I did buy a copy of The Kraken's Sacrifice by Katie Robert. This is the book two in the A Deal with the Devil. <laughs> Cooper is just, just being cute. Anyway, um, so this um, is where women are um, make a deal with the devil <laughs> and are brought in for an auction where they are then given to leaders of this um fantasy this other other dimension um which has kind of fantasy characters this guy is kind of a kraken king so he uh you know has all the tentacles and stuff anyway so he gets catalina and she comes with a lot of her own baggage and then they have seven years is the contract and it's so that the the place the um the dimension or the you know the fantasy world of this they that the there's no fights and everything that they're this is trying to kind of keep them in line but it's really just you know a really sexy romance kind of thing um this is not my favorite i bought the discreet cover but i uh, forgot that i just joined katie's um or katie roberts um patreon so i uh was in the level where you got you get some books like a couple times a year so i got the the uh the other the non-discreet <laughs> this is the discreet cover which i had the uh dragon's bride in this edition and then this is the other one so <laughs> anyway um so overall this was not one of my favorites of hers um but again she's a writer that i'm probably gonna read pretty much everything that she writes um clearly if i joined her patreon and the other the book i got that came out next was the uh demon's bargain which is like i would say it was kind of like 2.5 kind of in the series this was part of the um kickstarter that i got so i have the hardback edition that 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 this is in but because i was on her patreon again this i got this from for my book you know she sent this uh, them to us so anyway so that's the fancy cover my other ones look pretty discreet so that worked out pretty well um i am currently reading that one so i'm enjoying it so far and then the last books oh well okay not the last books the next section of books is all the rest of the books that are currently out for the innkeepers chronicles by alona andrews i am reading these with t and all the books really loved clean sweep which i had gotten early in the year from her for my birthday so we read that in october we're going to read sweep in peace um in november so i don't know for sure the order of this i just know that this is the next one this is book two um one fell sweep i think is book three and then i don't know which order the these ones go in there's a little novella um sweep with me and sweep of the blade so um this series is an urban fantasy well sci-fi urban fantasy series following um dina who is uh, who runs uh an inn um in texas and she doesn't have her clients are most or people who stay at her inn are usually from other planets so it's very it has the sci-fi element but it has a lot of urban fantasy uh tropes and uh, creatures as well but they're changed and different their werewolves and vampires are all very different from like a, a traditional urban fantasy so i really like it for that but i love the sci-fi element as well and they're just, they're not super long they are their self-published series they have another book coming out i think at the end of december i'm not sure i can't remember they just they finished they um post those as they come out so anyway um but the book's gonna come out a little later i think i have the ebook already pre-ordered because i don't think it had a a paperback yet so anyway but i'll probably get that when it comes out because i really am enjoying the series so far as that we're going to continue so i won't finish this series by the end of the year but i will we will be pretty far into it i'm pretty sure so that's which is fine i had yeah. and then sorry the cat's on my lap now so he's making this difficult and then i just want to talk about the books that i have read <laughs> i mean i did talk about uh the kraken's sacrifice which i did read but here's a few more um books that I read, um, Archangel's Resurrection by Nalini Singh is book 15 in the Guild Hunter series. Uh, one of my highly anticipated books of the year, of course, because Nalini Singh is my favorite author. And so love this book. Um, don't start with this one. Again, this is a world with vampires, um, angels and archangels. And most of the humans are not they're They're there, but you know, they're not in power, but Guild Hunters are, um, people who, um, 
hunt uh, renegade vampires and stuff. And so the first book, uh, Angel's Blood, starts with one of those um, guild hunters um, being called by the archangel to track down somebody very dangerous. Um, this is book 15. <laughs> don't, go, as I said, don't start here. I just love this series. The more it grows, the more things we learn about this world. And then this is definitely um, not going to be like one of my favorites of the series because it is a second chance romance, but it's done in a different way that I enjoyed it. I didn't have a problem with it, which is good because I I sometimes do. But I love that book. Anyway, I love that series. I'm currently rereading the series. I also got my copy of Buried Memories by Simon R. Green. I read this, I think I read it last year. I don't think he's had another one. I think, I don't know if this is the last book in the series. He, uh, Simon R. Green, I think had a stroke or something um, last year. So I think his writing is, he's been, he was writing other things. Um, so I don't know if there's more going to be in this. This is the Ishmael Jones series. And again, he is um, another one of those authors where I really like certain series and not some other ones. Some of his newer ones I haven't really liked, but so, uh, I loved Ishmael Jones. And this is following a man who um, is an alien who crash landed in the 60s. And now he, you know, he's, so he's, <laughs> he works for shady government people who promise to protect him. Um, and this is book 10 in the series. So I'm not sure if it's done, but I mean, this was a good one to end on if it was. I just, I don't know. I don't feel like it ended completely, but I don't know. We'll see. But I had read that already. So that was just my physical copy because I have them all right back there. Um, I also um, bought a copy of Walking in a Witchy Wonderland by Juliet Cross. I read this in September, but I did not have a physical copy. I read it on KU. Um, but I decided to just go ahead and buy it since I love this series and um, the Stay a Spell series. So this, I think this was three point, this is 3.5, I think. Yeah. Is that right? I think so. Anyway, um, it has, uh, was it five? Yeah, five. I think it's five um, short stories that kind of show the couples at different times, um, most of it around the holidays and stuff. And it was just cute. Some of them were, were better than other ones, but I, I did enjoy it. And it also, I liked it because it had, yeah, some people we hadn't met before or we were just about to meet in the next book. It was, it was nice. Um, I also got a copy of The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy by Megan Bannon. So I read this. Did I read this in September? Yeah, I did. And because uh, I had uh, uh, an EARC from um, Goodreads giveaway that I won. I love this book. This book was fantastic. And uh, this was a fantasy we're following Hart, who is, um, oh, a marshal. So he's a marshal and he he's kind of following up on uh, some things that are going on in this kind of Spanish, this kind of extra dimension or extra area uh, on this island that they live on. And then Mercy is an undertaker. And so they have a lot of interactions with the, what he does and what she does. And they did not have a very good first impression of each other. And so they do not like each other. And at some point he is feeling very down and he writes an anonymous letter to a friend and she gets it. And for a while they correspond back and forth. So it's, um, I've heard it's called like, you got mail, but with fantasy. I don't know. I really enjoyed this. I mean, there was only one thing that I didn't really like about it, but overall, this is a great story. I can't wait to reread it, but I had to get my own copy. And then the last one is Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Marina Garcia. So, um, I picked this up, um, on, it was on sale one day and I, I just finally picked it up. Even though I had the ebook, I just couldn't get myself to read it by ebook. But I read this and I really enjoyed it. I It's not my favorite of hers, nor is it a bad book. It just, it didn't do everything I wanted to, but it was, I think everybody is right that I think it's very interesting. And I think it's a different kind of gothic than I was expecting, I think. But overall, I really liked it, but I'm glad I have my copy. I don't think I'm gonna get rid of it at this point, even though it's not a favorite of mine. I just don't know if I'm gonna revisit this one, but we will see. It's gonna be one. It was one of the ones I probably shouldn't have bought, but I did. <laughs> So those are all the books that I bought. And I did, I did read some of them. <laughs> Not as many as I should have. Anyway, so that's, that's my uh, book haul. Oh, this was really long. But um, if of the books, again, the and the ones here at the end are the ones I've read. But the ones earlier, if there's anything that you think I should read sooner rather than later, let me know. Anything that I definitely need to pick up 
quickly. Um, you know, that could, I, it could be that point that would make me do it. I don't know. I have so many books to read though. And some of these I hope to get to fairly soon. Um, some of them I have plans for the classics, not so much. Those are more <laughs> maybe next year. We'll see. Um, I think that's it. So let me know if you bought very much in October since clearly I just bought and bought and bought. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.